God is going to give you what he promised you. You know why? Because he's faithful. Can I get an amen? But the problem is sometimes we're, sometimes, and that's why I'm a principal person. A, if, you, if you listen to the way I teach, everything about it, everything about, and, he, and Jesus was that way, everything is about principles. Everybody say principles. Principles are very important. You have to have, you have to allow the word of God to get in your heart. Amen? The Bible says whatever you meditate in your mind drops down into your heart. And out of the abundance of the heart is where the mouth speaks. That's where your actions come out of your heart. Amen? That's who you really are. So you got to change the way you think. Amen? You have to renew your, your mind. And these principles, what they'll do in your life is they're going to begin to create a code of conduct. Amen? That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Amen? You need to be a stickler about God's principles. Amen? Be a principle. Like for me, I get, I, I'll, I'll read a scripture, I'll get, I'll get a principle. You know what I'm saying? And I grab that thing and I'm like, oh, yes, that's honorable, that's virtuous, that's, you know, that's awesome. I, wanted, I, w- I want this principle in my life. Amen? God's word are principles, amen? But this is what I want you to, and this is what I want to share with you today. And this is where I believe a lot of people fail. Christians are good at repeating scripture, quoting scripture, aren't they? Right? But what we're not good at is extracting the principle from the scripture and then being in relationship with the Holy Ghost to make it practical. Because if you don't do that, then the word never gets legs in your life. It just, it's always just, so what happens is the word of God becomes like, it becomes like magic. It becomes like an incantation for many believers. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, like an incantation, you know, abracadabra, you know, whatever, you know? And there's just, but there's no practical principle extracted from the word and practically applied. And if you don't, and if that's not happening, listen, that word is not faith to you. You're not, are you listening to me? You're not operating by faith unless you can extract the principle and practically apply it. Come on, church. Everybody tracking with me here today? So, Pastor Alex, how do I extract the principle to practically apply it? That's a good question. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Amen? Do you understand that? Do you see why? You know, sometimes people say it's the word and the spirit. They almost, I don't even like the word and. Because there is, there can be no separation between the word and the spirit. And I'm trying to sh- teach you that principle right now. Do you understand what I'm saying? People say the word and the spirit. Oh, you know, you know, we got to have the word and the spirit. It's like, bro, if you have the word without the spirit, you don't have the word. Because the problem is this, the word will be like a Pinocchio story for you. There will be no practical application and no grace to live it out. So it'll just hit you on your forehead and, and bounce right off. Are you listening to me? And that's what happens to a lot of believers. You read the word, it bounces off your forehead, one in one ear, out the other. There's no practical application of it. Why? Because there's no relationship with the Holy Ghost with the word. You have to be in relationship with the Holy Ghost with the word. So press us, how do you do that? You read the word and you're talking to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is talking to you. And the Holy Ghost will show you the principle in the word. And then the Holy Ghost will show you how it practically applies in your business, in your marriage. Come on, somebody. As a father. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? This is how it works. And unless you have that, then there's no practical application. So the Holy Ghost is the one that makes everything practical. Not only does he make it practical, but he empowers you, come on, somebody, to live it out. Isn't that amazing? So you can't have the word without the spirit. It does not work. They're one and the same. Amen? You know what I'm talking about? Terry, you know what I'm talking about? It's the word and the spirit. So when the Bible says something like, if you're unfavorable with unrighteous mammon, who can entrust you the real riches? 
Right? Anybody heard that? Listen, that's a powerful statement. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, 90% of most people I've ever met in my life, they live their lives like that scripture bounced off their forehead. Because they're not practically walking out. How do you know that? Because I have a discerning spirit and I watch people's lives. And I watch the way people respond and what they respond to. Amen? If you're, if you're not favored with unrighteous mammon, who can entrust you the real riches? Then you get, then, okay, you got that one. Everybody say, I got that one. And then the Bible says, wherever your treasure, there's your heart. Hold on a minute. Now there's a pattern. You understand what I'm saying? Hold on a minute. Money is really important. Not only is money really important as a principle, the greater principle is this. My perspective towards money is very important. Amen? You want me to give you another one that goes along the same line? This is how precept upon precept, how God will build up revelation in you. Through scripture, right? I've given you two, right? It's, it's so, 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 so important, your perspective. I'll give you another one. The Bible says... They, there's only two gods that you can serve, right? You can't serve God and what? Mammon. Here we go again. Right? So that means that people are either serving one or the other. Amen? So you got three scriptures right there. It's all painting a clear picture. But you're not listening you know what I'm talking about? You just read it, and it just goes right over your head. Because if you're not spending time with the Holy Ghost, it just goes right over your head. But when you, got, when you spend time with the Holy Ghost, it, it hits hard. You know, how many of you guys know what I'm talking about? Like you read it, and you're like, man, that, that hits hard. It's like, it's like you read a scripture, and it hits hard in your spirit. Like if, like if um, you got 100 lines of code, you know, downloaded into you. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, that's the way the Holy Ghost is. You know what I'm saying? So I have so I can only serve God and Mammon. What's the principle in that? Serving God means serving people. I'm gonna give you the principle. Check it out. I mean, listen, the word can speak to you day and night. The word can speak to you for weeks and months and years. Just one word. The word speaks. The word is quick and powerful. You know what it does? It divides who you are. It divides the flesh, the soul, and the spirit so that you know which one is talking to you. Hello? This is coming from my flesh. That's a lust. This is soulish. This is a soulish thing. That's God speaking. That's what the word does. Without the word, you don't know who's speaking. That's why most people can't hear God's, you know why you can't hear God's voice? Why most people can't hear God's voice? It's because they don't got the word. And the word is the divider. It separates what is godly and what is not godly. So that you can know, you can know. Amen? So when the word says you can't serve God and mammon, I'll give you, and, and then you have, um, if you're faithful with unrighteous mammon, who can entrust you to the real riches? You have all these scriptures, right? Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will also be. So it's talking about investment. It's talking about your perspective. But I really like, you can't serve, you can only serve God and mammon. And there's a massive difference between the practical, have you ever thought about the practical outworking of that scripture in your life? Like, let's talk about it, right? If we serve God, you serve people. Amen? When you're serving mammon, you're serving a transaction. This, this is the difference between a person that serves people and a person that is a transactional person. There's only two kind of people on the planet. You're either transactional or you're serving God and people. That's it. That's how it practically works out. And you need to know how it practically works out. You know why? Because it becomes a mirror. See, now when the word... I think sometimes people are afraid to really get a revelation. 
because they're afraid of what they might see. Find me that word about the, 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 the you see, she's flowing. Find me, that, find me that scripture about the word being like a mirror. And then people look at and they don't like what they see. I think some people are afraid to get a revelation because you might find some shadiness. But listen, you might find some shadiness, but it's better to find it so we can get it out. Amen? Amen? We all shady without Jesus. Every, bit, every single one of us. Amen? So, amen? Have you been thinking about it a little bit? How does that practically work out in your life? Serving God. The greatest in the kingdom is what? Servant of what? Of what? People. So we should be searching out people. But we're not searching out people. We're searching out the bag. We're searching out the promotion. We're searching out the title. Power, money. And the only reason we search out power is because it gets us money. Hello? So you see how practically it just... That just a simple scripture can hit really hard. So I'm going I'm to read this out to you. Did you pull it up in context? You know I love context. I've, if I, I've told her probably a thousand times. No, I, you know what I always say to her all the time? I never, ever read one scripture. You will never find me read one, one scripture, ever. I always read things in context. <laughs> Right, honey? I always tell you that. <laughs> Is that the end? Okay, let's see here. All right, so I got to, okay. What was the verse? What number? 18, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, 17 is pretty good. 17, 18. Now, now, now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. And in all of us, as, look at this, and all of us, as we unveil, unveil, face, because we continue to behold in the word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Isn't that powerful? This is the Amplified. So when you be, begin to hold who God is, his glory becomes a mirror, a revealer, amen? Isn't that powerful? Man, that's so good. As in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are constantly being transfigured into his very own image in ever-increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is spirit. There's another scripture. This one's good, but there's another one where it says uh, it's, it's like a man looking into a mirror. Did anybody else find it? Can you give it to me? Did you find it? That, that, that one's really good. Amen? Because it's talking about his glory reflecting upon us. Amen? Okay. Check this out. Everybody say, this is why you got to get a revelation. So important. Look at this. It's powerful. Okay, watch this. Oh, man, it's so good. God, the word is good. Look at this. I'm going to start in 21. Because this is what we're talking about. So get rid of all uncleanliness and the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. And in a humble and gentle and modest spirit, receive and welcome the word. Come on, somebody. Isn't that what we're talking about? Which, look at this, man. I get excited about the word. Look at this, man. It's just powerful. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to start again, 21. So get rid of all uncleanliness and all the rampant outgrowth of wickedness. And in, and in a humble and gentle and modest spirit, receive and welcome the word which implanted and rooted in your heart contains the power to save your soul. Isn't that what we're talking about? Tell your neighbor, that's what he's talking about. 
Isn't that awesome? Everybody say the implanted word in your heart will save your soul. Powerful. Wow. This is exactly what we're talking about. It's almost like the Holy Ghost knows what he's doing. Amen. Isn't this powerful? I mean, just that scripture is just so powerful. Look at this. But be doers of the word. Obey the message, which is exactly what I'm telling you. What we're talking about, we're talking about, listen, we can always quote scriptures, but how do you become a doer? You become a doer by getting a revelation and having the Holy Ghost practically show you how that revelation applies in your life. Amen? But be doers of the word. Obey the message. And not merely listeners to it, betraying yourselves into deception. Mm. So what happens when the, when the word does not become practically applicable? You, you become deceived. That's called religion. That's a believer without relationship with the Holy Ghost. Amen? You get led into all kinds of deception. When you're not... When you're just reading the word to just read it, to know the story, you're going to get deceived in all kinds of deception because the word's not getting into your heart. The only way it's going to get in your heart is the Holy Ghost. Is he's going to implant it, the Bible says. It's the job of the Holy Ghost to come and implant the word in your heart. He's going to implant it. You know, the, the great uh, uh, men of old used to say, write your word in my heart so that I might not sin against thee. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about? Isn't that awesome? Write your word in my heart, O oh Lord, so that I might not sin against thee. That's what we need to, we need to have that kind of relationship, amen? This is powerful. For if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it or being a doer of it, he is like a man who carefully at his own, look at it, he is, like a, he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror. For he thoughtfully observes himself and then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. Mm. A person that doesn't have a revelation of the word, amen, will, will see the standard and easily forget it. You, you know what I'm saying? Like at the moment, they'll see... What's wrong? But then they go off and they, and they just forget about it. See, the Holy Ghost is the one that's going to put it in you. He's going to implant it into you. So it doesn't just bounce off of your forehead. Remember how I said it bounces off of your forehead? Well, the Bible described it, described it better than I did. Amen? This is what it means for it to go in one ear, out the other. It's a better analogy than I can ever give you. For anyone who only listens to the word without obeying it and being a doer of it, he is like a man who looks carefully at his own natural face in a mirror. For he thoughtfully observes himself, then goes off and promptly forgets what he was like. So you might think about it for a little bit. It might bring a little conviction, but you're, not, you're just going to forget about it. How do you meditate on his word day and night? Because that's what it takes. Amen? Remember that I may meditate on your word Day and night so that I may not sin against thee, right? That's how you do it. Well, who, we have a counselor, a helper, and a standby that helps us do that. Helps us keep the word, amen? Come on, somebody. Somebody say, keep the word. You're not good. But he who looks carefully into the faultless law, the law of liberty, and is faithful to it and preserves looking into it. That's what we need to do. Preserve looking into it. Being not a heedless listener who forgets, but an active doer. Everybody say an active doer. Who obeys. He shall be blessed in his doing. And the Amplified says he shall be blessed in his life of obedience. Isn't that powerful? If anyone thinks of himself to be religious, observant of the external duties of his faith, and does not bridle his tongue, but deludes his own, but deludes his own heart, this person's religion, religious service is worthless. 
Amen? If you don't control your tongue and what's coming out of your mouth, the Bible says that your religious service is useless. Amen? Because death and life cannot come out of the same tongue. Amen? He says, I present you therefore life and death. And he says, choose life. Amen? What comes out of your tongue is what's in your heart. Amen? You got to understand that. You have to bridle your tongue because your tongue has power. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and them that speak it will eat the fruit thereof. Amen? That's why with the same measure you give, it'll be given back to you. So if, you, if the measure that you're giving out is cursing and criticism and gossip and tearing others down, that's, what you, that's what's being multiplied back to you. Amen? Some people's life, you know, it tastes like vinegar and lemon juice because that's what you're putting out. Amen? So you wake up in the morning, you have a big glass of vinegar, you know, because that's what you're putting out. Are you listening to me? But when you're putting out life, my God, you wake up every single morning and you have the best cup of coffee you ever had every single morning. Come on, anybody can testify to that? Come on, your best cup of coffee is every single morning you wake up. I don't know about you, but that's me, amen? I'm just telling you right now. I give Jesus all the glory, amen? I'll tell you right now, I wake up every morning, it's the best cup of coffee I ever had in my life. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, amen? I'm, you, listen, your, your life will be sweet when you are sweet, when, amen? You put out... Amen? What you put out is what you're going to get back. That's just the bottom line. It's the law. It's like the law that governs all laws. God's not mocked. Do not mock me in this principle. Whatsoever a man sows, that he will reap. It's like the ultimate life hack. Amen? For people that are listening... Amen? Anybody in here listening? How many of you guys want everything to just get better? Just be better, do better, say better. Amen? Come on, somebody. And, and if you feel like you don't have self-control, the Bible says that we, self-control is a fruit of the Spirit that we can draw from. So, Pastor Alex, how do I receive and eat from that fruit? You got to spend time in the Spirit. Amen? It's as simple as that. You want self-control? You want, me to, you want me to show you how to get self-control? You spend time in his presence. Oh, okay, l l l let's go back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enact this for you. You're in the natural. You have no self-control. And you're like, I need self-control. Where is this tree of self-control? I can't find it. Now, why can't you find it? Because what? Because you're in the natural, right? Is that what you were going to answer? See, you guys are so smart. Amen. I can't find this tree. I, I need this fruit because I'm about to do something I regret. She's driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what you do? You get in the spirit. And when you get in the spirit, almost magically, what you couldn't see now is accessible. There it is. Amen. There's that tree. Amen. With the fruit of the spirit. My God. And you're like, you know what? I used to act like that. But I don't want to act like that no more. Because I got this fruit, amen? And this fruit changes me. This fruit gives me peace and it gives me joy, amen? Come on, somebody. Do you know what? Listen, what is your life source, amen? God will change you. Self-control is the fruit of the Spirit. And you can learn to eat from that fruit, amen? When you spend time in the Holy Ghost, amen? If you don't have self-control, you're not going to be able to bridle your tongue. How many of you guys want life and life more abundantly? What do you think, according to God's laws, if you're really listening and you're paying attention to God's word, right? Because how many of you guys know we can go to school? How many, we all went to school, right? Some of us went to college. How many of you guys remember what, what, most of those classes, right? You don't remember like 90% of what you learned in, in high school or in college, right? Is that true? How many of you guys believe those chemistry classes, uh, you know, or whatever? You know, you, there's so much, Right? So a lot of times we're listening, but we're not really paying attention. Hello? But when you're paying attention, like you're really paying attention, and you really want to know, and you're really pressing into the Holy Ghost, amen, it's going to, the word is going to be a, a, a mirror, amen, and it's going to show you where you've gone off the rails. 
Amen? God's going to confront you in love. And now you're going to have to deal with it. And the thing about it is this. You get to a point where you want to deal with it. You don't want to hide anything from God because you want to grow. Like, I want to grow. Things have gotten amazing. But I know they can get a whole lot better. Amen? So listen, God, I'm putting everything on the table. What's holding you back from putting everything on the table? What are you afraid of? Amen? Everything's on the table. God, listen, get it all out. Be honest with the Lord. One of the things that I teach my guys, my disciples, the guys that are really close to me, when they're asking me, because a lot of the, you know, when young guys, you want to teach them, you know, everybody wants to know about the anointing, how to flow in the anointing, how to hear God's voice. And the number one thing I tell people about operating in the Holy Ghost, flowing in the Holy Ghost, the number one thing I, I always tell them, do you, do you want to know what it is? I always tell them this, you have to be honest with yourself. If you're not honest with yourself, how can you hear God's voice? Amen? If you're not honest with God, if you're not honest with yourself, you're not going to be honest with God. So you're holding back. You're being shady. God's not going to use you like that. You need to be honest with yourself. Amen? Because, listen, when you're honest with yourself and you're honest with God, that's when you start getting rid of your, your self-ambition that gets in the way from God using you. All that self has got to get purged out. How does that get purged out? you got to be honest. you got to put it on the table. you got to let God go into every crevice and corner and get all, the, all of you out. Amen? Come on. A lot of people are not honest, man. you like hiding stuff from God like you can't see everything. Just put it all on the table. Ask God, listen, he's your help in a time of need. Amen? God's going to come and help you. But he can't help you if you're hiding things and you're pretending like you're holier than thou. No, you got to be honest. Get it out on the table. Reach out for help. Amen? Self-righteousness is not going to get you anywhere. Because as soon as you're, you're self-righteous, the blood doesn't apply anymore. Come on. You're not righteous because of your actions. Amen? It's God. Amen? There's no self-righteousness in me. My good works are as filthy rags. I don't have any good ideas. Amen? But people expect God to use them when they got all the good ideas. They're holding back from God. They have all this ambition. It gets in the way of everything. How does it get in the way of the anointing? How, you know, because it's like flown in the Holy Ghost and you're talking about this. How does it, how do you mix the two? I, I, I'll, I'll clue you in really quick. If you come to a service and you want to lay hands on the sick and you want to flow, like uh, tonight, I want to pray for the sick. Tonight, I want to prophesy. Tonight, I feel like I want to do this. You know what God's going to do? I go, oh, great. All right, hot shot. All right, let's see. Let's see what you can do. All right, buddy. Let's see what you can do. Amen? Listen, the Holy Ghost doesn't flow as you will. It flows as, he's, as he wills. You got to empty yourself out. But you got all this ambition. You're a hot shot. God's like, all right, go ahead. Let's see what you can do. Amen? You can't heal anybody. Amen? You're not the healer. Amen? You're not the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire. So that's how it gets in the way of everything. All that ambition has got to be purged out. So when you come, to, when you come as a minister, you come empty. There's none of me. The Bible says no flesh will glory in my presence. So if you want God's presence to show up, then your flesh is not, can't show up. But that's the problem with a lot of people. They want to be used by God, but their flesh is on the way. All that ambition of what you think you should do. No, 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 no. you got to step out of the way. But you can't do that if you're not honest. So you got to show up and be like, all right, Lord, what do you want to do? And be ready to listen. And he's going to be like, I want you to go in this direction. And that's the direction you go to. And that's when his presence shows up. And that's when he comes and moves. Because he's the one that comes and touches the people, not you. Amen? So really, what we should want to be is ushers to the Holy Ghost. That's what a minister is. Amen? That's just a little rabbit trail. Amen? If anyone thinks of himself to be religious, observant of, of the external duties of his faith, and does not bridle his tongue, but, delude, but deludes his own heart, this person's religion 
religious service is worthless. External religious worship. Religion as it's expressed in outward acts that is pure and unblemished in the sight of God the Father is this. To visit and help and care for the orphans and the widows and their affliction and need. And to keep oneself unspotted and uncontaminated from the world. So what is it saying? It's saying that relig true Christianity acts. It doesn't just talk. There's got to be some follow through. Amen? I was talking to the guys after service on Sunday. A lot of Sundays, the guys will just come around. I'm like, I'm done preaching. I done preach for two hours. And I come and sit down. I was telling Lauren in the car. I was like, I come and sit down. And all the guys just crowd around. And I'm like, wow, I done preached for two hours. These guys don't want to leave. It's amazing. No, it really is. We have like the most amazing church. I had like 15 guys just crowd around. Guys, just stop it with the Bluetooth thing. Who's doing that? <laughs> Nobody's going to take credit for it. <laughs> so stop it right now. Jesus' name. Command you to stop. So I'm just sitting down. There's like 15 guys. You know, hanging around after service. And I just start talking. And before long, I start preaching again. <laughs> you know? But there's a big difference between, it is, listen, there's a lot to be said with that, you know? People are hungry. Some people are looking at the time. As soon as service is over, they're out, they're, they're out the door. It's a revealer of people's hearts. You know, it's like, like every single time, you know, like it's all good. Like every single time, you're going to just bounce and just run for the door? Like, it's actually grieving, especially if they're leadership. It's like, I don't understand people. But so, so, so I got like 15 people around, right? And I'm, and I'm preaching, and this is what I told them. This is what I told them. And I was talking about just practical things. What you reap is what you sow. And you actually have to live it, and you have to walk it, and you have to be it. If you want to have authority, you have to be the, a man that carries authority. So what does it mean to be a man to, that carries authority? You have to do the right things. And when you do the right things and when you speak, there will be authority because you carry it. Why do you carry it? Because you purchased it through the price of actually being the man. Amen? Like, I'll give you an example. <laughs> He's disconnecting it. Thank you. So that it doesn't make the noise again. Come on, give him a clap. You know what I call that? I call that initiative. <laughs> so I was telling him, uh, you know, I was telling the guys, and this is, this is just practically what we're talking about here today. It's either in you, you got it, and you're living it, or it's just a bunch of hot air. And hot air doesn't work. Amen? If you're trying to have authority in this life, and you're not the type of man that carries that authority because you're, you don't live it, you're a shady individual. Amen? Are you, are you listening? But you're trying to have that authority. When you try to act on it, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Because authority is supernatural. Are you listening to me? Authority was supernatural before it was natural. There is natural authority. People have authority because of titles. But there, is, there was supernatural authority before there was natural authority. What men copies, we copy God's things. Are you listening? But these are God's things. This is how he functions. We're created in his image. The reason we have hierarchies is because there's hierarchies in heaven. There's different classes of angels. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everything is a shadow of the heavenly thing because we're created in the image. So we copy heavenly things. So authority is actually a spiritual thing. A good way to describe it, for you to understand it, just for a quick description, is a pit bull can smell fear. Is that true? Right? When a, when a pit bull knows... If you're afraid and if, and if he smells, if he feels, I don't know how they do it, but they do it. When they know that you're afraid, they're sensing shadiness in you. And that's why they respond, right? Right? Well, human beings have this unsaid barometer where they can detect real. Amen? Human beings can detect real love. Amen? When you love somebody genuinely, they can experience, they feel it. When you have authority, they feel it. They know it because you have it. Amen? Come on, somebody. You can't try to take it. You got to have it. When you have authority, you have authority. When you don't have authority and you try to take it, it doesn't work. Is that true? Have you ever tried to take over authority over somebody that doesn't respect you? That doesn't work, right? 
But when you have authority, people respect you. Why do they respect you? Because you have authority. So I'll give you an example. David was a mighty man before he was a king. Is that true? Remember, he killed the lion, the bear, right? Had many victories, right? So David was a mighty man by definition. Amen? So when David was king, what did he have an abundance of? Come on, somebody. Are you guys even here? I don't know. That hit me hard. I don't know about you. I mean, that's the problem. You're just not excited about the work. So how many of you guys think that's a coincidence? Huh? What did David have? It was David and his what? And his mighty men. Right? David was an exceptionally mighty man. And it talks about his mighty men. But there's no other king in Israel where it talks about their mighty men. Like David's mighty man. Because David was an exceptionally mighty man. You understand what I'm saying? So you're always going to reproduce who you are. And you're always going to draw to you what you have sown. Oh, God. See, with the same measure, you're going back now. You can't fake this. You can't fake it. You're not, you can't fake. You can't fake authority. You can't fake loving people. You can't fake Christianity. Because you're always going to get back what you put out with the same measure. So David was a soldier. He was a mighty man. He was about that life. Hello, right? David served Saul even when Saul's heart turned against him and got jealous of him. Saul was all good with David until the crowd started singing his praises. Amen? But what, is, what did David do? He held rank. And he was a mighty man. No matter what. Amen? So guess what David had an abundance of? Guys that would go to war with him at his side, and no matter what kind of army came, they didn't run. And these guys, these guys gave their life for David, and they had, great, they had great victories with David. Can I get an amen? Amen? What do you want? Listen, if you're called to lead, you're going to need some mighty men. Is that true? This is what people don't understand. And this is the difference between doing it God's way and doing it your own way. Because you can go and serve, you can either serve God or you can serve mammon. So if you serve mammon, you're always going to sabotage relationships to get the money and to get the transaction. So guess what happens when you finally dog, climb the, the, the dog-eat-dog -dog ladder and you get the title. Guess what? You'll have the title, but you won't have the authority. And guess what you also won't have? You won't have mighty men that will go to war with you. So it'll be you all by yourself in a high place, easy for the devil to come and chew you up and spit you right back out. Is that what you want? You'll have all the money, but you'll lose your family. You'll lose your kids. You'll lose everything. You forfeit everything. You don't have true relationships. You don't have community because you never did it God's way. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like you can do it your way, but doing it your way, it's going to get a totally different result than doing it God's way. When you do it God's way and you sow the right thing, you're going to get the right thing. You will not only have authority, amen, but you were a good servant. You lifted up somebody else's hands. You were faithful with another man's. Are you listening to me? So then God comes and gives you your own. And not only does God give you your own, but because you were a good servant with the same measure that you serve are the kind of people that God's going to bring right back to you. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Come on. Give Jesus praise. So it's like, it's like I, I, you know, I challenge people, and people are like, yeah, well, whatever, I'm going to do it my way. All right, bro, do it your way, but your life's going to suck. Like, you being stubborn to not want to listen, it's not about me, it's the word. Bro, you're just hurting yourself, you're sabotaging yourself. That's why we should humble ourselves, because we don't know better. You don't know better. And you got to allow this word to become a mirror to actually change you, amen? So when you do it God's way, it's always going to put you in a position where you keep God first and you're pursuing people around you to serve and be a blessing to. That's what, that's what it means doing it God's way. 
Pastor Rides, what are you trying to tell me? What I'm trying to tell you is that if you're not doing that, you're not doing it God's way. And I'm not telling you that to condemn you. I'm telling you that so that it can be a, a mirror to reflect what needs to be changed. Come on, because I, I was there too. Amen? And I needed to make the adjustment at some point in my life too. Amen? But it, the most beautiful thing is this. When you do it God's way, you build a community. You build a family. You build long, you build relationships that you can build your life with. Come on, does anybody want that? That's really, that's really what brings you quality of life. You want to know the number one thing that will bring you quality of life outside of God is people. Yeah. Having the right people around you. Because you do the right thing. People are the most valuable thing. The most precious thing. It, listen, it's the only thing you can take to, to heaven is relationships. But we invest in everything else outside of that. I was talking to Lauren the other day, and I was telling her, you know, because financially, things are growing, and God's really doing amazing things financially. And I'm going to hit all my goals and exceed them, because God is overwhelmingly good. Are you listening to me? I'm just telling you. God is ridiculous, right? But you know what I was telling Lauren? I was like, you know what's the most amazing thing is? That I have this community that I can enjoy God's blessing with. Because without that, who the heck cares? Like seriously, genuinely, I was telling, I talked to my wife about this stuff. Like I love hitting my goals, but listen, I promise you right now, without the Lord, everything that you, without the Lord, the only thing you can think about is your goals and how you think your goals are gonna make you happy and you'll arrive at that place and I promise you, you won't be happy. This is what it, this is what it looks like to have the right kind of relationship or the right kind of perspective in life, is you're looking forward to your goals to enjoy it with the people that God's brought into your life. I'm telling you right now, it's the most amazing thing. That's actually what brings joy in my life. That's awesome. Amen? That's awesome, man. Because without that, it's like, I don't know. And, and, and I'll tell you this. There are people, unfortunately, some people are going to have to find out for themselves. And it's unfortunate. What I mean by that is some people are, they're, they're going to have to get to a place where they have a measure of success and find out that it, that, that it didn't bring what they thought it was going to bring. And they're going to have to experience that disappointment to learn what I'm teaching you today. I'm trying to give you the shortcut today. Amen? Because I've been there. And I'm telling you, it, it, it's not all it's cracked out to be. It's just not. Money's not going to make you happy. God will give you everything that money can't buy. A godly marriage, godly kids. Amen? Friends. That's why I'm so hardcore invested in people. There's nothing better than to see somebody break through and begin to blossom. But the word, the word I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's going to expose and you want it to. And sometimes it's going to hurt, but you got to put it on the altar. If you're a leader in this church, I challenge you. You need to be meeting with people on a constant basis for the very purpose of leveling them up. I challenge you. Because if you're not doing that, you're not a leader. You have the title, but you're not living it. Leader of what? I'm a leader of a title. Can you be a leader over a title? What are you a leader of what? You're a leader of what? Okay, so that means people should be following you. Somebody should be following you. Amen? You should have disciples. Listen, I, and this is the standard. Everybody as a Christian should have disciples. We should all be pouring into somebody. Amen? We should all be invested in somebody. Everybody. Everybody say everybody. That's God's goal for your life is to let your, shi your light shine before men. Amen? God's going to, you know, everybody. As a Christian, let's say as a Christian, you're experiencing an awesome marriage. You can impart that into another marriage. Amen? Let's say you're experiencing a divine healing in your life. 
You can help walk somebody through that road. I mean, finances, whatever it is, right? Everybody should be doing that. Everybody say everybody. But you know who should be exceptionally good at doing that? Leaders. That's what it means to be a leader. A leader is not a promotion for financial increase. Everybody wants to be a leader because they want to get paid. And you see that motivation when people are not discipling people. Listen, if, if everything about being a leader is about getting the title because there's a paycheck attached to it, that's the wrong motivation. A leader should be, have an abundance of disciples. That's what it means to be a leader. Amen? That's why in the church, in the American church, you'll have a senior pastor, you'll have even associate pastors. You might have seven associate pastors. And none of them really have a relationship with the flock. There's like a massive gap. And I'm telling you, that's the problem of the church. Because everybody's comfortable in their position of leadership. But a leader of what? What are we leading? And I'm telling you right now, people need a shepherd, a mentor, a discipler. People need it. Some people will never break through unless they have that. I'm telling you. That's why the Bible says, go ye in all the world and do what? Preach the gospel and then do what? That's like the number one thing we're supposed to be doing. Amen? And that's the number one way that we spread the love that's been shed abroad in, in our hearts. Amen? I have meetings all the time. <laughs> look, look, listen, I'm going to give you an example. And I'm not trying to go too long today. I'm going to wrap it up here real quick. But I'm, I am stirring you up. Do you, feel, do you feel like I'm stirring you up today, man? I'm challenging you, Amen? So, yesterday, so yesterday, I stayed up till 6.30 in the morning, working with the online stuff that I do. I stayed up till 6.30 in the morning. I had a meeting at 8.30 in the morning. I slept for an hour, and I went to that meeting in downtown Orlando. Why did I go to that meeting? I went to that meeting 100% for the purpose of leveling somebody up in their business. No benefit to me. And I was excited about it. And when I left the meeting, I was like, man, this guy's gonna break through. I can't wait to see him blow up. This whole thing's gonna blow. It's gonna be ridiculous. That's my life, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. There's no excuses. You can work. Listen, when you are doing God's bidding, the spirit of grace will come on you. You will never be a complainer because of work. The last thing I complain about is work. When you're a transactional person, you're always going to be looking at the time. You're going to be looking at the time sheet. You're going to be clocking in and out. Every, you're so conscious about your transaction. Clock in and out. You're so conscious of what you get paid for every second, every minute. When you're doing God's work and you're living in your grace, you can work the whole day. Let me give you an example of my schedule. Sunday. Okay, so Sunday, I wake up. I come to church, preach. I didn't sleep Sunday until, I didn't sleep uh, Sunday night until Monday night. So Monday night, from Monday night, Saturday night, I did not sleep. I just worked straight through, stayed awake. I'm not telling you that you should do that, or they, but I'm just telling you, like, I'm not looking at the clock. Amen? But we're seeing results. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm just saying I never looked at the clock, never complained once in my wife. I'm like, we're getting it done, uh, doing this transaction, or I'm doing some stuff partnered with Kyler. I got my own stuff that I'm doing too on top of that. I got all kinds of stuff. And I'm just like, I'm in the flow. I'm just not going to stop. Amen? So, I mean, what do you, I mean, like, I, you, you just got to, there's no complaining. I don't even remember the last time I complained. Especially about work. Because we're, when you're doing what God's called you to do, there's increase, supernatural, there's multiplication, there's supernatural grace. There is no clocking in and out for me. You know what I'm saying? So then I go, right? I, I go like, it's crazy. And I'm not telling you you should do that. 
So then, so, so, so then um, Monday, I do the same thing. I stay up basically the whole night. Today I woke up, 7.30 in the morning, 7, 7.30, and I worked all the way. No, I worked the whole day, literally the whole day. Before I came here, I took a two-hour nap, and I came here. So, but, and I'm not even like, I'm like, yeah, I'm great, you know? And look, and I'll have spurts of like where I'm just killing it and working really hard. And obviously then you got to take a step back because take care of the kids and spend time with the family and all that. And I get all that. But there's no complaining. There's, bro, there's just, I'm, we're, listen, we are, we are taking territory for the kingdom of God. Are you listening to me? <laughs> what are you going to complain? You're working and you're taking this much territory from the devil. And you're taking this much territory from the devil. Why, what is there to complain about? We just took territory from the devil. So it's kind of hard to stop working. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to put the, the, the plow down. You know what I'm saying? And if you, listen. So when I'm working, like if I'm having a, a meeting with him to help him with his business, and I'm having a meeting to help him with his business, and I'm having a meeting to help him with his business, with his business, which are all people with his business, which are all people that we have meetings with his business. You understand what I'm saying? These are all people that we meet with, with his business, with his business. Amen? Right? None of it. I'm never thinking, how is this? Because none of my meetings, you know, I like to talk. None of my meetings go less than two hours. You know? I'm never thinking, never looking at the time, never rushing anything. I am fully all in. Amen? Everything that I can to do to help that, that person. I'm telling you, God will make you that way. And when you become that way, you never have to pray about your breakthrough. Your breakthrough is always going to come back to you. Because with the same measure. You understand what I'm saying? This is the life hack. I'm trying to teach you something, you know? This is it. It's amazing. I got meetings. Guess what? I got meetings tomorrow. I got meetings the next day. And it's all business people from this church that we're helping level up. I got a meeting every day, sometimes two, three meetings, all the time. It's the most amazing thing. And guess what? People's lives are being changed. You speak wisdom. People are leveling up. Their businesses are going to another level. I'm just telling you right now. Five years from today, we're going to have so many multimillionaires in this church. It'll be absolutely, <laughs> insanely ridiculous. And, it's, and the, thing I'm not the thing I'm excited about is not the money. The money's the byproduct. It's the influence. It's the taking the territory. It's that now it's our turn. You know, the, we're rolling up our sleeves now, okay? You had your turn. I remember one time I got in a fight, which, you know, I don't recommend you doing. I got in a fight in a bathroom. So I'm fighting in the bathroom, and this huge dude, this dude was like, this dude was like, I don't know, he was like 6'3", like 250. I mean, the guy was big, you know, and I'm fighting this dude, and he's throwing me and, you know, into stalls and just fighting. So then I get in this good spot where I push him up against the wall, and I'm going to work on this dude. I'm giving him everything I got. I mean, I'm going for it. And then he grabs me, and then he says, now it's my turn. <laughs> I was like, holy crap. Bro, I remember it vividly. <laughs> Bro. Bro, he just picked me up. He said, now it's my turn. He just like threw me against the wall. I mean, it was, it was intense. It was intense. And then, you know, some people came in. They grabbed us. Police officer came in, you know. And I was kind of glad the police officer came in. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I was holding my own, but. <laughs> so, but that's, listen, the devil's been bullying the church for long enough. Are you listening to me? Come on, me, the Christians have been pushed up against the wall. We've been getting bullied, amen? Now it's our turn. But I'm trying to tell you how you're going to do it. Some of you, listen, some of you, and I'm not telling you this to condemn you, amen? There's no condemnation. But can, can, can I break out the mirror today? Is it okay? Are you not going to get offended? Listen, the only reason I'm, I'm, I'm sharing what I'm about to share with you today is to help you. It's not to offend you, okay? This is coming from a pure heart. I'm going to break out the mirror. Is that okay? You're going to see something, all right? There are people that don't help anybody. They don't meet with anybody. They don't disciple anybody. They don't give anybody a phone call. They don't speak in anybody's life or even invest it in anybody. 
and they complain about their work. You know what that's called? That's called toiling, which was introduced after the curse. You have been delivered from toil, my friend. You, listen, that toil mentality has got to go. Because, listen, this, God's going to give you so much grace where you're actually going to work a thousand times more. You're going to be so productive, and you're never going to complain because you're going to feel, feel the wind of God on your back. Not only that, not only are you going to be working ten times what you used to work and be ten times more productive and multiply, but you're going to be helping others do the same, and you won't complain about it. Come on, give Jesus the glory. Come on. This is what I'm talking about. And you'll be more blessed than you could ever. And you won't even have to even pray about any of your needs. Because with the same measure. Amen? See, everybody wants life and life more abundant. And you can either pray about it and you can say, Lord, I thank you I have that life and life more abundantly. And just sit on your chair and just pray about it. Or you can be about it and begin to sow that abundant life into somebody else. And when you sow abundant life, guess what you're going to get back? You're not going to have to pray about having an abundant life when you're sowing abundant life into somebody else. When you're sowing into somebody else's abundance. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. When you're sowing into somebody else's abundance, God's going to make sure that you have abundance. Come on, do you receive that, church, today? Do you receive that? Come on, give Jesus praise. Well, we're going to give you an opportunity to sow seed. Amen. We're going to wrap up the service. Amen. And we're going to worship God with our substance. Amen. You know, when we give, it should be about first fruits. Because giving originally was about first fruits. We come and we bring God our best because we recognize that he anointed us and that he blessed us to multiply. Everybody say he anointed us and he blessed us with a blessing to be fruitful and to multiply. So when I receive my increase, I give God my first fruits, amen? Because he's the one that gave me the increase. Do you receive that, church? All right. And let's bless God today. And as we do, we're going to get the heaven out of here. Were you encouraged today? Come on, man. And I'm so excited, man. We got people starting businesses of real estate. We got every kind of commercial, uh, construction companies. We got pressure washing companies. We have crypto and trading and markets. I mean, we have music production. We got media companies being started in this place. I mean, it's just out of control. Amen? And we want to get you activated. We have roofing companies, everything in between. Amen? So we believe in that. Not everybody's called to start a business, but a lot of people in this church are going to be entrepreneurs. Amen? And there's a lot of you that are in transition that we're helping you find what... Your place is, amen? And that's ultimately what I want as a pastor. You're not going to come to this church and you're just going to be like, oh, praise the Lord, brother, and you don't have my number. Listen, my cell phone number is on the website. Everybody can give me a call. And I'm willing to work with anybody that's really, truly wanting to work. Amen? But if you're lazy, if you're lazy and you don't want to put in the work, then we're not going to, we don't work with people like that. But if you're hungry, you're humble, and you want to change, listen, we will be invested in you. And we will see you through the other side. It's not that hard. Amen? Come on. It's really not that hard. Amen? We want to see you in your promise. Because we want to see you practically doing what God's called you to do. Because if I'm the only one that's doing that and you're not doing that, we're not going nowhere. And this is not just about building a big organization. Amen? This is about building the kingdom. And the only way we're going to do that is if you get mobilized in what you're supposed to be doing. Amen? So we're 100% invested in that. Amen? Amen? You received that, church? Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Ushers, go ahead and pass out the offering envelopes. And uh, we'll get with this. Amen? Thank you. I hijacked the, the sound guy's tablet. I used to be a sound guy, which. Amen. We're believing God for big things this this week. Amen. God's going to do some big things. Amen.
How many of you guys believe in some miracles? Amen. Well, go ahead and collect it. And then we collect the offering. And we'll get the heaven out of here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Just really quick about this weekend because it's Easter weekend and obviously big deal here, big outreach on Saturday. Uh, tomorrow is flyering. At what time? meeting here. So we're doing a mega flyering blitz right at six here. So we need as many people who can come out, come out. And, um, and if for whatever reason you absolutely can't come, take a big stack of flyers. But ideally we want to use them in the local area because that's where, you know, people are actually going to respond. So if you can come out with us tomorrow night, if you can be at the outreach on Saturday, um, it's Saturday morning at 11 a.m., but we're going to have a whole setup and all of that. Pastor Josh has all the details. So y'all can chat with him or you can chat with Pastor Yevin also. They have all the, all the plans, but we just want to really encourage you guys to get all hands on deck and it's going to be an awesome, powerful Sunday. Amen. 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 Are you encouraged today? Come on, you're called to dominate. You're called to be the light. Amen. In the city on a hill, you're going to be the standard when God's done with you. Amen. The standard in your industry, wherever God's planted you, you're going to shine for Jesus. You receive that? I'm going to read this and we'll go. We'll go. God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten son, his unique son, so that whosoever believes and trusts in him, clings to and relies on him, shall not perish, come to destruction, or be lost, but have eternal, everlasting life. For God did not send his son to the world to reject, to condemn, to pass sentence on the world, but that the world might find salvation and be made safe and sound through him. He who believes in him, who clings to him, trusts in, rely on, is not judged, but he who trusts, he who trusts in him never comes up for judgment. So please understand that. For him there is no rejection, no condemnation. He incurs no damnation. So there's nothing that's standing between you and God. But he who does not believe, cling on, rely and trust in him, is already judged. He has already been convicted and has already received sentence because he has not believed in and trusted in the name of the only begotten son. He is condemned for refusing to let his trust rest in Christ. How many of you guys trust in the Lord? Amen? There's nothing standing between you and God. I don't care what you've done. There's no condemnation. He loves you. The blood of Jesus is enough and it's sufficient, and God is patient, and he's willing to work with you. Amen? You received that, church? I want everybody just to stand up. He's going to work with you. I don't, it doesn't matter. Nobody's too far gone. There is no condemnation. Amen? Jesus died on the cross to make you whole. That's the bottom line. And he's going to help you. He's never going to quit on you. Never. Father, I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this church. I thank you for every single person. I thank you for the supernatural grace, the empowerment to live out your word, to press in. Lord, I pray right now for spiritual hunger upon your people, that they may spend time with you just to fall in love with you, to, to get your purpose and your plan for their life, Lord, so that they may not walk aimlessly, but accurately, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Raise up your people to be that light in their circle of influence. Because, Father, I know as they become that lamp in their circle of influence, one day you can make them a city on a hill. And my friend, that's what I want to tell you today. I want to encourage you with this. 
If you take your lamp that you have right now and you put it in your house so that it shines in your house and then that lamp goes and shines in your circle of influence, God will raise you up to become a man that can be a city on a hill. Are you listening to me? And people will look up to that city and say, surely the hand of God is on that man. God wants to raise you up to be that man, amen? But you gotta be, first, you gotta be faithful with the lamp. Before you can be a city on a hill, you have to be faithful with that lamp in your home and you have to walk it out in your circle of influence. You receive that, church? Father, I thank you, Lord, for a supernatural blessing upon your people. Let this week be a week of miracles and blessing in Jesus' name.